Made me wonder whether Disney will regret that moment for the rest of time. Oh, I can't not look at it. <laughs> Hi guys, it's me, Happy Cat, and this is my review of Little Mermaid remake, live action, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so I'm going to start off with a very brief non-spoiler section because a lot of you probably already know quite a lot about the film already. And then I'm going to go for a very in-depth, almost scene by scene spoiler review of things that worked, things that didn't work. And then I'm going to give my opinion at the end. And we're going to find out if Little Mermaid is worth watching or not because I feel like this is going to be the film of the year that defies opinion amongst everyone. What are you smiling at? It's all the drama, Mick. I just love it. So, non-spoiler review. Now, this is going to be a bit tricky for me because I there's a lot I want to talk about <laughs> and I can't in this section. So I will keep this section quite small. Do feel free to skip ahead if you just want to know all the juicy bits of the spoiler. So, of course, the new remake is based very much on the original. And one thing I will say is please make sure you see the original if you haven't already. Like I rewatched it a couple of days before I saw the film. And I would advise you if you haven't watched the original for a while, then watch the original before you go in. Because I do feel like a lot of the film kind of relies on you having some sort of knowledge because things are not explained properly in detail. Um, again, I won't talk about the scenes as such, but yeah, quite a lot, lot of things has been changed. Like it has stayed quite truthful to the original, but some things they've changed. And I feel like if you haven't ever watched the original, you might not understand why certain things are happening. So that was definitely apparent to me. So I would definitely go and watch the original beforehand. The only bad thing I watched in the original beforehand is that you might feel like this film doesn't quite meet your expectation of a remake. Because yes, there are good moments in it, but there are also bad moments in it. <laughs> but in general, I would say the remake does kind of keep true to the main story. I feel like a lot of the scenes were very similar to the remake. I feel like it was a little bit rushed in places, which is weird, right? Because it's longer than the original, but somehow it still feels a bit rushed. Kind of weird. Ooh, I don't even understand how that physically works. But don't get me wrong, there are good parts in this film, and the good parts is the actors themselves. All the actors, okay, most of the actors <laughs> were actually really good. Um, especially like the leading roles, they were all really good. I mean, of course. Halle Berry playing Little Mermaid. I know there's a big controversy about this at the moment where like it's almost become political to have an opinion on her. <laughs> like whichever way you choose to express your opinion is the wrong way. Um, so whatever. I liked her. I had no issues with her. The only thing that really still grites on me, like the thing that annoys me the most is the red hair. I'm sorry, but the red hair really kind of annoyed me i feel like they could have done they could have given her red hair i mean she she's purple and green she's a purple and green mermaid she could have had the red hair i don't know why they didn't do the red hair it wasn't far-fetched doing red hair at all like i mean she's a fantasy mermaid you know <laughs> she could be oh she could have any any color hair color they want to give her you know so and i felt like in some of the scenes later on her hair just looked more like way more brown. Like some some scenes her hair looked really ginger and other hair and other scenes her hair just looked really brown. And that did kind of annoy me a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, the red hair is still it's just not the little mermaid to me. She has the red hair. And of course, Melissa McCarthy was also really, really, really good. Again, there's a there's a little bit of mixed opinions on her that I've seen around. Some people uh, really liked her. Some people think that she wasn't very good. I actually quite liked her. And again, maybe I don't have that nostalgia factor in this, which actually might make my review quite different to a lot of other reviews, because a lot of other reviews are people who are big fans of the original. And I wasn't a huge fan of the original. So um, this actually might be quite a good review to see it from like a third party non-biased perspective because I have no opinion going into it I don't have that nostalgia nostalgia for it so maybe I might not judge it as harshly or maybe I will <laughs> you'll have to wait and find out but for me I think Melissa did really really well in it like she gave the performance everything um 
you know, you do have to think about these things. Like, I was reading up how they filmed it, and she was obviously in a harness, and she had like eight actors around her being the tentacles when they were filming. So, you know, she does have limited movement. You know, you've got to think of the situation when they film. I think, to be honest, I think she did really, really well for what was probably quite a hard sort of thing to shoot. Um, and I actually thought her voice was pretty spot on. I mean, I only watched the original a couple of days ago, um, like as a refresher, and she does sound very, very similar. Like, I think she did it pretty well. I mean, obviously it's not going to be a like for like remake because they can't do with that, right? It's not an animation and the voice can be a little bit more dramatic, I guess, during animation. But yeah, I thought Melissa did a really good job. Well done, Melissa. I think her dad, the Trident King, he was also quite good as well. I felt like he didn't quite get as angry as I wanted him to get. Like, again, going fresh off watching the original again. You know, he got very, very angry in scenes. And I feel like he didn't quite hit the anger level. But he was still very good. And I think he did sort of suit the role well. He definitely, like, it definitely suited him being like a, a trident king. <laughs> and then we have uh, the other characters like Prince Eric. I thought he was quite good. Again, I felt like it was a little bit flat in places. This is going to be a reoccurring thing in my review. Things did fall a little bit flat in places. There were some scenes where it does look like he'd been doing like the 20th take and you can kind of see it in his eyes a little bit. That he was a little bit, didn't really want to be there for some scenes. <laughs> Why God? Why are you doing this to us? But yeah, and then we go on to like the um, supporting characters. So we've got Sebastian, we've got Scuttle and we have, what the hell's the fish name? <laughs> Flounder! That's it. Oh my god, I had like a brain fart then. Yes, Flounder. Um, <laughs> interesting choices creatively with these three. Um, I feel like they're probably the weakest part of the whole thing. And I don't think it's necessarily the actor's fault. I think a lot of it's to do with the animations. It's just weird. Again, I'm going to go into it in more detail later. Um, yeah, they're probably not as strong, which is kind of weird, right? Because in the original, I feel like the the friends are like the thing holding the show together, especially when she loses her voice. I feel like they're the sort of ones keeping the thing going. <laughs> and it just, it's just, yeah, it's just a bit meh, meh. But yeah, I really want to get into the spoiler discussion. So I will say as a quick summary for people, non-spoilery, -spo who people who just want to go and see the film who hasn't seen it yet. It is worth a watch, I think. I would say out of all the Disney remakes, there's probably the better one. Um, like Pinocchio and Dumbo's a bit iffy. And a lot of people didn't like The Lion King. I don't mind The Lion King, but I know it didn't go down very well with everyone else. So I would say like Little Mermaid is better than a lot of the other recent remakes. So yeah, it probably is worth a watch. I would say so. Yeah, I would say my like rounded score before I go into the to the spoilers. I would say my rounded score probably a six to seven out of ten. Yeah, maybe a six to seven. It's kind of okay, maybe more towards six. It's hard, right? So there's moments in the film that's more like a seven, maybe eight, and there's moments in the film that's more like a five and a four. So balancing out the average here probably like 6.5 let's go 6.5 <laughs> so if you haven't seen the film yet maybe go and see the film and then come back to see my spoiler discussion if you haven't or if you don't care then just stay around and watch anyway <sighs> right then spoiler section now I'm going to try not to let this video run too long. <laughs> I know that's easier said than done. I have a lot to talk about and I do kind of want to go through the film um, almost beat by beat. So I'm, this is your spoiler warning. If you haven't seen the film, go and watch it. Or if you don't care being completely spoiled, because I'm going to talk about the film in detail, not quite scene by scene, but things that bothered me in each scene and things that were good in each scene as we go. So they completely changed the beginning. <laughs> There's no longer this big showcase musical thing that's going to happen to and then reveal that Ariel's missing. That didn't really happen. They're just the sisters are just sat around chatting and then the dad's like, where the hell's Ariel? 
Right. So that felt a little bit flat. There wasn't some like big opening number. I thought they could have really done something there to really have this big like spectacle number. That would have been really, really cool. And then it would have almost built up to the fact even more that Ariel was missing. So they scrapped that. I'm not sure why they scrapped that, but they have. But then the uh, film does kind of follow on to the original. So Ariel is scavenging around, exploring some ships. I feel like that scene goes by very quick. A big thing I've noticed in this film is that it feels rushed. And I don't know how because this film is longer than the original, but it feels more rushed. Like the original had really good pacing. And that's something I did notice about the original. Beat by beat, the pacing was perfect. But in this one, the pacing just seems off as either too fast or too slow. And it kind of jumps around. But the beginning is just so fast. We've cut the opening number. And now Ariel has just found the fork but she hasn't found the pipe. I had a feeling they might have taken that out. But it means that scene gets rushed even faster because she's not found more things to explore. Then we get the big shark scene. So that's kind of true to the original. But then of course she wants to go and show Scuttle all the amazing things she's found. The fork. <laughs> but this is the thing that really annoyed me in the film and it still annoys me now. Some for some reason they're trying to they were trying to make it a big deal that Ariel was going to break the service, so it's almost like she's never gone up to the service level and she's had to stay underneath. They didn't explain this at all, by the way. They didn't explain the significance of this at all. I found out after the film in my own research that basically the reason why this happened was because it wasn't it's was meant to be a big deal for Ariel to go to the surface. But that wasn't explained. This is what I mean. They kind of want you to know these things before you go in to watch the film. It's a really weird setup. Anyway, <laughs> so the thing that was really distracting is that Scuttle comes under the water, eats a fish right next to Flounder, obviously, and then starts talking underwater. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, how is this bird talking underwater? And then, I mean, she was there for like a good five minutes talking to Ariel about the fork thing, right? And then she's going to go up to the service afterwards. And she's like, oh, I need to go back to the service. I need air. And I'm like, ha, wait. And I'm sorry, things like that really kind of takes you out of the film because you're then questioning it. And uh, yeah, so that was, I mean, that was, uh, I mean, when you got that film, when you got that scene in like the first like 10 minutes of the film, and you're thinking, oh boy. <laughs> so then we're gonna go again, it kind of sticks true to the film up to this point. And then it goes to um, her and her dad having an argument. She then goes to the cave and then she does her wonderful number, which is very true to song. And she sings it beautifully. I think she's really good. Um, I feel like her whole casting choice, or oh, I think the whole film, to be honest, is a love it or hate it thing. I think it's definitely dividing people. People either love it or they really hate it. And it almost, it's almost becoming a bit cultish because whoever loves it is attacking the people who hate it and the other way around. <laughs> I think we can all choose. I think we can all have bits we like and hate about it. Like, that's just how it is. But I did like that number. That was actually really good. And it was better than it was in the trailer because in the trailer, it all looked very, very dark, very dingy. And everyone was like questioning it. But it is a little bit lighter and you do get to see all the treasures that she's collected. So yeah, that was good. So again, just like the original, it moves on to like the fireworks scene with the boat and then she breaks through. And again, they tried, they tried to make it like it was a big deal. She was going to the service, but that went straight over my head. I had no idea that that was meant to be such a big deal. I think because I watched the original, like, you know, get her going to the service. She already did that. So I didn't, they didn't build it up enough to be a big deal. So that went completely over my head. <laughs> so yes, we get the little boat scene and they're singing sea shanties, which is quite cool. Ariel is looking through. It's all kind of set up very similar, very similarly, sim sim similarly, sim similarly to the <laughs> to the original. However, the big statue reveal is gone. There isn't the big birthday statue thing. That's gone. I think this is why the film feels rushed because those little extra scenes does sort of build out those scenes a little bit longer and because they're gone it's just it just jumps to the next thing too quickly I feel like I feel like the beginning's just so rushed anyway so we don't get a statue refill so I was with my sister at the time and my sister was like oh how's her dad gonna find out then if, if the statue's not there I'm like I don't know but then after the ship 
crash well the storm happened and that happens all the same way i think the storm scene was kind of cool actually the like the effects are kind of cool or like all the fire effects and the poor little dog max being on the boat like that was all kind of that was all, that scene was really really good um but then after the crash happened the statue just floats down and i'm like wait, wait wait there wasn't a statue and now there is a statue unless there was a statue on the boat and i didn't see it but this is what i mean like if you you might miss things because i didn't see a statue on the boat maybe there was correct me if there was one but now there's a statue and the statue doesn't even look like him <laughs> so she's like admiring a statue that doesn't even look like him that much and also because we didn't get a big build up with the statue when she's in the cave with the statue like she's there isn't really any scene of her talking about it i think she has like one line referencing the statue so you know in in the original she would talk about his face and how she was like falling for him and like how pretty he is but like all that's kind of gone um again it's kind of like the character of the character though isn't it like you know i don't know oh sorry i've skipped over a bit of course after the boat capsizing scene we do have her rescuing him and he and then they get the scene where she's singing and then she runs away i forgot to put that i got it mixed up but yeah after that then she does find a statue that all plays out pretty much exactly like the original so that's all very true now we get the proper introduction into ursula we only had like a snippet of her like a little bit earlier but she's uh, like talking about her plan a little bit more and uh do you know what i really like melissa in this film i really do like some people are not again it's a 50 50 people either love her or hate her i actually really like her again maybe i don't have that nostalgia to the original so i'm not like hanging every like fiber on who's being casted for it but i think she did a good job as ursula i think she did really well and to be honest, she did sound like her. Like she really tried. Like, she really tried her best to get it as close as possible. So I did. I think she did really, really well. It's probably really hard recording in the studio with like eight actors being her tentacles and everything. And you know, she, and it's awkward. You're not. At, you know, she's usually on green screen with nothing to react to. So I, to be honest, I think she did really, really well considering everything. So, of course, Sebastian finds the cave and he's trying to convince us, um, Ariel to stay. So he does that by singing one of the greatest numbers. Well, what should be the most greatest number in the whole film, and that is Under the Sea. Now, the trailer didn't make it look very good, to be honest. The trailer made it look really flat and the CGI looked terrible. I do feel like they've improved some of the CGI in the main film. I was looking for it because in the trailer, her like her tail and her bra thing looks weird. You can just it almost looked like it was floating on her body where the CGI was really bad. But in the film, it looks a little bit better. They have corrected some things. Um, it looks like so it's still the CGI still looks weird like don't get me wrong it still looks weird some things look like they're floating still but it it is better than it was in the trailers so that is good <sighs> one thing I will say about this film right one thing I will say about this film is I feel like they I don't think they knew what to do with it like I, I don't think they knew how animated to go because in one beat it looks super realistic and then the next beat it looks kind of cartoonish and it's like they're trying to find a mix between but it doesn't work i feel like they need to just commit and do it more animated or they just need to make everything super realistic but they made everything super realistic it would be super boring right so i feel like they should have just done a bit more animated it's just weird and like even the whole thing with scuttle like scuttle is a bit more animated and she's you know she's kind of just i mean she looks like a bird still but she's got a bit more head movement she's a little bit more crazy she'll flap her wings around she has a bit more animation to her where flounder is just a fish <laughs> you know flounder has no emotional depth whatsoever <laughs> and i just feel like it just looks weird you know and and like sebastian was done wrong as well sebastian just wasn't animated enough he couldn't give his emotions out 
And do you know what? I feel like they should have just gone a little bit more animated. I really do. I really think they should have gone a bit more animated with the side characters. But yeah, I would definitely think they should have made Sebastian a lot more animated. And Flounder, like, give him some animations. <laughs> like, Flounder has no animations. Like, it's just a, f just a fish. He's just a fish. Anyway, so Under the Sea was a little bit flat. It did build up. So I will say, Under the Sea got good as the song went on and this is what so this goes back to what i was just saying about the animation so as the song goes on the sea creatures are becoming a bit more animated and there's lots of jellyfish which is kind of cool like the jellyfish and there was turtles and like it really started building up as the song went on and it kind of turned into like a big fiesta thing by the end but i'm like it took ages to build up to that i feel like under the sea should have started with that almost immediately because the trailer we saw of it was just the beginning part of the song and it really worried me <laughs> like watching the trailer because it looked really bad <laughs> but it takes to the end of the song to get there and i feel like i feel like it needs to be magic to start with i mean sebastian is trying to convince ariel to stay and in the first half of the song there's not much convincing like i wouldn't be convinced to stay there <laughs> and it's the first time in the film we actually get to see like proper color I do wish they did more color in the film. Like I wish there was more color. The under the sea section looks so pretty and I really wish that they kept it through the whole thing. It would have been so nice if they did that. See, the way they could have done it, I reckon, they could have done it like Finding Nemo, I reckon. I reckon if they had animations or like maybe a slightly more textured, realistic look, but have the Finding Nemo faces, that, I reckon that would have worked, you know, because Finding Nemo is really good and it was colourful. Like the sea was quite nice and they did have darker bits. Maybe I feel like they should have done it a bit more like Finding Nemo because it wouldn't have been weird. And the live action is the human people, right? You can have human people and have cartoons. It works. Anyway, so moving on, Sebastian inadvertently tells the king and then the king goes and destroys the cave just like what happens in the original that all pretty much plays out the exact same way um the only creative difference that they did is that he had she had the hand of the statue not the head that probably made way more sense because the hand you know it just i think that was a good i think that was a good switch that kind of made more sense doing it that way and then ursula comes ursula has a bubble and she speaks to ariel through a bubble and then ariel goes to see her but Ariel ends up going by herself. I don't remember seeing Sebastian and Flounder follow her, but they do end up in the cave later. So Ar Ariel's traveling through the cave. We don't see the little creatures. We don't see the old mer people who were like chained to Ursula's wrath, the creepy things. But there's just like these eyeballs. They're, I don't know, they're weird. It's just like... There's these like almost starfishy things with an eyeball in it. And again, this is not explained. I don't think we ever get that explanation. And like what happens at the end of the f at the end of the animation that they all come back to life, that doesn't happen here. In fact, we just never see those eyeball things again. And it's not explained what they are. So yeah, that was kind of weird. They've just kind of taken it out. I don't know why. I think it was actually kind of cool having those creepy things in the original. It definitely adds some sort of level of horror to it, which I actually quite like. So we get to Ursula and she strikes up a deal with Ariel. And of course, she gives her number the poor, unfortunate soul. And I must admit, this is where Melissa really shined. I thought she was really, really good at the song. And I think she did. She actually did sound like her quite well, to be fair. Like, I think she did do a really, really good job. I don't care what people say. I think she did a good job with that. There was a couple of bits where she kind of switched into Melissa mode. And I know that annoyed some people. And yeah, it was a little bit like almost fourth wall-y. It kind of broke you out of the atmosphere a bit. So I wish it began. It might not have been her. Oh God, sorry. <laughs> that might not have been her. That might have been the way she, she might have been told to do that. It might have been in the script. So that might not be her fault. That could just be creative things put in that she had to do. But yeah, that kind of broke the illusion a little bit but yeah her actual number was really good and when she turned and went angry because she kind of gets angry at ariel for not making a decision like i got goosebumps i literally got goosebumps because she when she got angry she put 
everything into it. She had like a hundred percent commitment, energy. Um, yeah, and I completely bought it. And I actually, I was like, whoa, dude. I actually got kind of scared watching it. Yeah, I got like, I had proper goosebumps in that moment. I was like, wow. It's like well done melissa um but ursula gives her as part of the potion she gives her like amnesia so ariel doesn't remember that she has to kiss the the prince by a certain date um I, I, that's kind of weird i don't know why they added that in because it was never brought up again it's a bit of a weird thing they added <laughs> and she didn't actually sign a contract i think it was a contract in blood or something something like that but yeah so she becomes a mermaid but instead of being washed up on the beach she actually gets um, picked up. She gets caught in a fishing net and ends up on the boat. And then the sailor there is like, oh, I'm going to take you to the castle. They'll know what to do with you. And that seemed a bit weird too. Like you're on a, you're on a boat on the castle. That you're, you're on a boat and this fisher, the sailor wants to just take you straight to the castle. That seems a bit weird to me. Surely you'd want to take her to the doctor, not to the castle. It's a bit of a... <laughs> bit of a weird thing but okay whatever we'll just go along with it anyway so we get the new song which is a nice song nice to the ears but it was forgettable i don't even remember the tune of it nope i don't remember anything about the song all i knew is it was nice to listen to um and that's on her way to the castle and then she gets to the castle and then they sort her out they sort of dress her and get her put together and she's like singing another song during this time so she meets the prince there and of course he doesn't really pay much attention to her to start with actually he's just got his head fixated on the other girl <laughs> so one of the new one of the newer scenes that they've added which i actually really liked was the scene when she's like so ariel goes and explores the castle she ends up in like a library study kind of place with loads of artifacts that the prince has collected and she's exploring that and then they kind of bump into each other there and they have like a nice little get to know me session i actually really like that scene that was really cool like she showed him some like where you can find crystals inside rocks and there was a cute little scene with a seashell where she teaches him how to blow a seashell i thought do you know what i actually really like that scene that was a nice new scene that was a nice new addition that i'm glad they had in there that was really really sweet and then of course the next day they go on their little date I'm not going to say too much about the whole date day because it all kind of plays out the same as the film near enough. Uh, you know, she goes, they're, they're on the um, the horse and carriage. She kind of takes over the reins, so they go a bit crazy. She ends up in the marketplace, um, which I actually really like that scene too. That was really cool with some like Caribbean kind of music. And um, yeah, that was like a whole vibe. I really, really liked that scene. That was good as well. And then they end up in the romantic lake section as well. This, they've changed a bit. It wasn't as magical. It kind of was just basically two people on a lake on a boat. And then, of course, they had the the, the song. The song was still there about kissing the girl. That that was still there. Um, but Scuttle was just a little bit annoying. <laughs> I feel like Scuttle was a little bit annoying through the whole thing, to be fair. Um, like, Sebastian's trying to get the mood together. And then Scuttle's like, eh, in the background. <laughs> So, you know, a scuttle can be a little bit of a handful. I reckon she might be quite popular with, like, the kids. I reckon kids would probably like her a lot, but I don't know. I find her a little bit annoying. There's <laughs> not much colour again. This this film is very lacking in colour, to be fair. They had some fireflies and stuff, but it wasn't the same. It wasn't, like, the magic. And I feel like they could have had some flowers, at least, like, have some colourful flowers around if you're not going to do lights and all that. But of course, Ursula can't let that continue. So then she has her master plan to turn into like the siren to go and s seduce the prince. <laughs> so the woman who's playing the, the siren, Ursula, she's amazing. Like whoever, the, I don't even know what that actress name is. I'll, I'll get a picture of her up here or something. But that actress is so spot on like she wasn't even on screen very long like 10 minutes or something but my god she was memorable and i really liked her she had so much expression she had like the evilness like and her voice uh, just everything about her that the, the the lady who played the that evil ursula she was really really good anyway so there's rumors that the prince is about to propose so who's going to tell ariel about it well scuttle crashes in and decides to do a rap. <laughs> now, this is the point where a lot of YouTube reviewers are 
hammering, hammering the the movie because of this one scene. And I must admit, it's cringe. It's so cringe. I don't know what Disney were thinking. Were they just trying to be cool to keep up with the kids? I'm not sure, but oh, it was really bad. It's called um, it's called Scuttlebutt. I don't even know why it's called. Does anyone know why it's called Scuttlebutt? Because it's really annoying. Even the name of it's annoying. But yes, yeah, Scuttlebutt is probably the worst thing that Disney has done for this film. And it's probably going to haunt them for a while yet. And I was discussing this with my sister later. I've got a really bad feeling that this Scuttle song might be popular with the kids. And I got a feeling it's a song that parents are probably going to hear on repeat over the summer. <laughs> it's probably going to be like another Baby Shark situation. <laughs> But yes, Scuttlebutt just seems completely out of the blue and completely in the wrong place. And it doesn't fit with the with the sort of theme that's going on right there. It's really, really bizarre. I'm not sure why they did it. And then Sebastian starts joining in too and then it's even more cringe. <laughs> like, Sebastian starts rapping. I'm like, oh my god, what is this? And even at the end of that, even Ariel just throws like a towel over there. Like Ariel just throws a tower over them, tower over them to shut them up. Like literally, <laughs> I feel like everyone in the audience was feeling that. And and again, like there's like after she does that, like Sebastian says a joke, and I'm finding like the jokes just aren't landing in this film. Like the jokes from all the characters, they're just not landing. I was in the cinema with people, and no one was laughing at any of the jokes. And it was like, the jokes don't feel natural. They feel like someone's reading from a script and it's like, insert joke here. Um, it, it is not, it's not witty. They're not landing very well. And even though they're kind of like, some of them are the same lines from the original, but it's just not funny. Um, I'm not sure why, why it's not landing. I don't know whether the, because the animation too, the expression of the characters make a big difference to how a joke's portrayed. But yeah, I feel like the uh, yeah the jokes just was not landing, and people, even kids in the audience, just weren't like I don't think anyone laughed through the whole thing. I don't remember hearing anyone laughing, and in fact, me and my sister were laughing at the scuttle song just because it was so bad that we were laughing at it, <laughs> not with it. Anyway, so this is another part of the film that kind of jumps like ten million miles an hour ahead. So in the original, Ariel has to go and stop a wedding and they're already on a boat and she has to try to get to the boat. I guess due to logistical reasons and because it doesn't really make much sense in a real life version, they were just having an engagement party and it was just in the castle. <laughs> like so the whole build up was gone. The build up to get to that scene to break up the wedding, that was all kind of gone. So that was a little bit, again, it just fell flat. It all happened very quickly. I, th there wasn't even any build up. Like, I feel like there could have been a scene. <sighs> Do you know what? I think I could have done this better. I, th I think what they could have done is have it that like Eric and Ursula were about to kiss. And then, so, and then, I don't know, maybe someone comes in and is like, no, stop. Like that would be more of a build up and more dramatic. I don't think anything was really happening. They were just all chilling out. They were all just chilling out at the engagement party. And then Scuttle comes in and just starts attacking her out of nowhere. I felt like there wasn't like a, a build up moment to be like, no, like just when they're about to kiss or something. Like, no, nothing like that. Just all chilling at a party. Scuttle just starts attacking her for no reason. Obviously, we know what the reason is, but they don't know what the reason is. And then Ariel just sort of comes in out of nowhere and smashes the necklace. But it just feels very anticlimactic. There was nothing, there was no build up to that scene at all. And I think the Scuttle rap didn't help because it just went for the rap and then it went almost straight to that scene. Um, and again, th there's just no build up or suspense at all for that section. So that was a bit annoying. Um, then, of course, when she breaks the necklace, we find out it was too late. And Ursula, the, she turns into a mermaid in front of everyone. And then Ursula turns into Ursula in front of everyone. And the CGI looked really, really bad in this section. I guess because in the sea, they can hide it with like rays of light from the from the from the sea. And, it, you know, reflections of the water, they can hide some CGI problems. But when it's in the middle of the daytime, in the middle of 
lots of hu like lots of real humans stood around the cgi does look quite bad when you compare it to real humans but when they get back into the water it pretty much plays out the same way um ursula makes um the king give up his trident to save ariel but then so in this one they've changed it they don't turn him into that little creature thing because obviously they're not in this one i don't think because they haven't explained it no she does like she doesn't even kill him it's the it's the eels that end up killing him bit of a different thing but anyway so they flat out kill him obviously we know that's not how it's gonna end <laughs> i didn't even have to be spoiled for that i just kind of assumed and then the big Ursula fight happens and it does kind of happen pretty much the same way they made some swaps like Ariel turns the ship instead of Eric. Um, but that all kind of plays out the same way and I'm actually surprised they we're going to do that because when I was watching the animated version I did not know how they were going to do that scene. I didn't know whether they were going to do it or they were going to do something different to avoid doing it. But they did and they had a giant Ursula in the sea sort of hitting everything. And it, it reminded me, uh, it was a bit video gamey, if that makes sense. It makes me, it made it feel like a last final boss of a video game. But this is what I don't get, right? Because they do this crazy thing with Ursula, making her look so unnatural. But then they make other things look too natural, like Flander. And that's what's really weird, is that they make, they, they allow it for c certain things but they don't allow it for other things. And it's just, it feels weird. It feels like this, it's like, it's like the film is trying to be two different things. It's trying to be real and then it's not, you know, it's just, it's just weird. I honestly think if they just did everything like Finding Nemo, but like with like more realistic graphics with Finding Nemo, I reckon it would have done really well. Anyway, bigger to the boss fight and it all kind of ends the same way. She gets stabbed with the boat. That also looked a bit weird to me because they made her so big. Like this little ship <laughs> in comparison was just going to stab her. Was just going to like injure her. But like she looked so big that like this little boat looked like it was barely going to do anything. Like I don't think that little, the mast on that boat would have actually done any damage because it's, she was so tall. <laughs> Yeah, that looked a bit weird to me. It's just something I noticed, but that all kind of ends the same way. And then, um, yeah, and then of course, Ariel is seeing Eric from the beach and she's sort of longing to be with him. And in the animated version, this is when the king would change her back into a mermaid, but they decided to do like a little extra scene because they, they were all like, oh no, we're going to go back to our real lives. And and the woman who plays Eric's mum in this, well, stepmom, uh, like um, adopted mum, she um <laughs> through the whole film she's like i hate mer people mer people are evil they they're really aggressive and even when the whole reveal happened with ursula and ariel in front of everyone her, his mom was still like really really like against mer people like she was fully against mer people anyway need, needed to tell you that for context for the next scene but anyway, yeah, they, they added in an extra scene with him um, talking with someone. That was kind of weird. But then they, that scene just seemed really unnecessary because then they kind of go back to the same scene where she sat on the rock again. And then he turns her into the mermaid with the same line, I think, what he said in the original. And then, yay, finally, we're all mermaids. You know, <laughs> we're all mermaids, we're all humans. And, you know, happily ever after. And then they have like a whole little happily ever after montage, which is kind of the same. Um, but then we see like a flash forward when Ariel and Eric are about to go traveling and then Eric's mom is suddenly like oh like I love you Ariel you're so accepting into our family like but it's like literally like less than 10 minutes ago in the film she was still saying like don't trust mer people mer, pe mer people are evil and now she switched again to like oh you're one of the family now it's just like there was just no character growth for her do you know what I mean? Because even even after the whole bit with the Ursula thing with Ariel saving his life, she still said to him, well, you know what? You, you know, we're, we're just not meant to mix with those people. Like, we're, we're meant to be different. You know, we're not meant to be on the same page kind of thing. <laughs> and then literally, she's just so accepting in the next scene. It's just, it's just weird. Like, there's no growth of character between her being... Like between her hating mer people to to now loving them, 
that just seemed really kind of distracting as well. Okay, just before they're about to sail away, Ariel's final goodbye with her dad and all the other mer, mer people. And this scene was a bit weird. I would have been quite happy for them just to sail off into the distance and that would be the end. But no, she had to do one last scene with her dad, wishing her well. And then all the other mer people get up to wish her well, that they support her. But the CGI in this scene, I don't know if it's because it was the end of the film. <laughs> Is it because it was the end of the film? And like, I don't know, did they run out of time or something? I'm not sure. But like the end of this was just, the CGI was just all over the place. And then they kind of, they're in a rowboat and then they just speed off away. But it looks so weird. It looks like they're on a speedboat. And it almost looks like they're floating because Eric and um, Ariel are kind of just sat on the boat, but it looks like they're just floating with the boat. It's really bizarre. I'm not, I, weird, 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 weird. <laughs> and that was distracting too because it was like the last scene of the film and like that's what you're left with. <laughs> Oh dear. But yeah, so as you can see, the reason why I want to do this big breakdown because I wanted to give my reasons why I either liked things or I didn't like things and to explain my reason why I gave it the score I did. There were moments in this that was really good and I really, really loved it. And there was moments in it that I was almost holding my head, my hands to my head in cringe. So it's such a big scale, guys. And this is why I wanted to do a full in-depth review of every detail that Every detail that really kind of um, either took me out of the film, every detail that brought me back into the film. Yeah, you're definitely kind of in and out. <laughs> you're basically riding the waves through this whole film. <laughs> but anyway, I know this is a bit of a long one, but I want to do like a detailed breakdown of everything. Um, yeah, because I'm, I'm sure some of you guys will probably share some of the things that I found too. Please be respectful to everyone though, guys. This is a free world. Well. It's kind of a free world as long as we can make it a free world but everyone's free to have an opinion everyone might like it everyone might hate it it doesn't matter it's not the end of the world if you either loved or hated the little mermaid there's far too much bigger things going on in the world right now that we don't need to get negative with each other everyone's entitled to, to their opinion like you might not agree with something someone else says it's totally cool but please let me know what you thought of this film have you seen it yet did you have the same issues i had have you found issues that i didn't know about please let me know what was your favorite scene what was your least favorite scene so if you haven't subscribed yet make sure that you do i am going to be doing lots of reaction videos on this channel and i will be reviewing the barbie movie when that comes out too i'm quite looking forward to that one and I also am doing some reactions to TikToks and other sort of current events. So please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. And turn on the bell notification so you can be informed when those videos are up. Well, thank you all for watching. Take care, stay safe. And until next time, bye.